Ferrari in 2020 has been nothing short of a disaster. A million miles away to where they were at this point last season. I mean, even though the car wasn't really competitive realistically last season, it's a lot better than what it was this season. And Ferrari are just digging themselves a hole. They're just going backwards in development and they are probably at their, probably their, one of their lowest points in the history of the Formula One team. And this year, and, and in a couple of races time, they are celebrating 1,000 Grand Prix, And you think that this year would be a year of celebration, a year of redemption, to finally get their first World, Dri World Drivers and Constructors Championship since 07 and 08. And to be fair, they look a million miles away from achieving that anytime soon. So really the big question is, what is going wrong at Ferrari? What is wrong? What is the fundamental problem? I think the, really the, the big answer is, Nobody really knows. I don't think even Ferrari know this, which is really embarrassing, if I'm being totally honest with you. I mean, their recent perform performance at Spa just highlighted how bad this car really is. It didn't break out of Q uh, Q2. It was absolutely poor. P13 and P uh, P14 in qualifying, and then the same result in the race. They were the only team to be slower at Spa this year compared to last year. I mean, how? Just... I don't even, I can't even like process how mad that is that Ferrari, a team of Ferrari's stature, how much money they get within the team, you know, and all, and, and all their facilities and stuff and all their resources, that they are this far behind and they are this slow. Just, it, I'm, it, I'm just baffled. I really, really am baffled. I mean, honestly, I really am. So Lyle, first of all, I mean, you know, Ferrari's, Ferrari's season so far has just been an absolute disaster. And to be fair, I, we can't see it improve it any, anytime soon, can we? So in your own opinion, what do you think has went wrong this season in 2020? Do you think it's, it's down to one particular problem? Do you think it's, 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 a big, it's one big problem? Or do you think it's a, small, a bunch of small problems here and there? What do you, in your opinion, what, is, what do you think is the problem at Ferrari this season? I don't think you can say one thing has gone wrong with the team. It's just... You know, the, the car just isn't as, pow as powerful as the other teams. I mean, Mercedes, you know, they've really dropped the pace. They've really dropped in terms of how fa uh, fast that car is. And in that way, it's just down to a development yeah. problem. You know, every every year they, they develop the car again, and it just hasn't worked out. Even though in terms of the Ferrari engines, you know, you look at the other Ferrari engines on the grid, Alfa Romeo and Haas, they're also not doing as well. I mean, again, there's no real change to how Haas did last year. We know that it was a bad year for Haas last year. And Alfa Romeo, they weren't very good, but they're never really that good. They're, to be honest, they're very, you know, they're very much a back market team. And that car is just not good in terms of power. And I think that's really what it is. I mean, there were 20 brake horsepower slower on the straights. And the thing that stood out to me when you realise how bad the Ferraris were was Charles Leclerc, um, he made up four positions in... The, the opening lap of Belgium obviously went for it went to eighth position so it was good for him but then you know in a matter of a few laps he was dropping back and even before he'd pitted he was two or three spaces before the back of the grid you know and being challenged and even overtaken by the likes of Daniel Fiat who eased past him uh, going up Radion then he was battling with the Alfa Romeos of Antonio Giovinazzi of course before he crashed and even the Williams drivers it wasn't good for Ferrari they were really lacking power that really seemed to be the problem you know I don't want to see any high speed or low speed the cornering of course the ability of the drivers is definitely there Charles and Sebastian definitely a great drivers and, and of course still are you know depending on what you think about Sebastian he still definitely is one of the best drivers and he's very skilled around that car it's just the f that's the fact that the car is just not powerful enough um it hasn't had many technical problems so really they can't even blame it on that you know they have a, a dodgy mguh or mguk or turbo or anything like that it really hasn't had any problems like that you know last year we even saw sebastian sitting in the garage a few times and ferrari having a, a few problems but again they were still challenging this year nothing i don't i just think it's 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 mainly down just to the engine lack of power and I don't think that the, the team are even happy with what they've made. Um, second thing is also the, the drivers, as I said, you know, they're, they're strong enough to pull that car into good uh, uh, positions. But again, sometimes, you know, are they letting it down? We don't really know. When we see Sebastian Vettel at risk in qualifying, and even Charles Leclerc in risk, obviously, it's mainly Sebastian who, you know, falls foul to Q2 finishes. Um, do, is it the drivers who, who are doing that? 
I mean, they're obviously good enough to think that they would be getting the best results out of the car, but are they strong enough to get the best results? We know that Sebastian, of course, is losing love for Formula One. We know that Charles Leclerc will be getting very angry with that car because in the world of Formula One, he is very much, he's Max Verstappen's level, and but of course, at the moment, he's not. You know, men mentally he is, and he should be, he should be challenging. It really, it should be Verstappen and Leclerc for 10 years till the cows come home, but it's not. It's Leclerc in that terrible car, so he'll be getting frustrated. Sebastian's losing a bit of love, and of course, this will not be helping him. Look at Silverstone, Ter the two races at Silverstone, terrible event for him. Of course, you know, getting some okay results, obviously, towards the end of the race, he can pull it back. Obviously, he won for, uh, drive of the day in Spain for a seventh place redemption drive, still with a penalty, and again, still not where he should be finishing. But, you know, it's been good performances by them, but they won't be happy, and I can't see that their reputation and, and what they're, you know, their driving ability will be improving in these races because those two drivers who have won races and obviously Sebastian, who's won many championships, will be getting annoyed with the car. And again, also, we've seen things like what happened in Styria. I know that it was a mistake said by Charles Leclerc, but we've seen problems like that. And are they battling each other too much to for the car just to not be there? It's just not powerful enough. It really isn't. And for the more for the pressure that Ferrari are under, for the, the expectation of Ferrari, it's just terrible you know Ferrari are a team as I said in the news Ferrari are a team who are always they should be to be honest they are nothing but thought of is in that championship fight all the time they've won many championships of course but they're always almost every single year they're always there you know they've always had somebody there whether it be Kimi Raikkonen in the last few years of course Fernando Alonso um, even the teammates of, of Michael Schumacher, you know, you look at Barrichello and Massa, and of course, you know, Massa 2008 got very close to winning it. And even in modern times as well, you know, Charles Leclerc wasn't close enough to battle the, the world championship of Lewis Hamilton last year, but again, he was still in that fight. And of course, a third position in the constructors is always thought of. So for that reputation and for them not to achieve that is just absolutely terrible. And that's the thing also as well. I mean, you know, they're not third position in the constructors. Sebastian and Charles are not in that position of Bottas and Verstappen to, you know, fight anymore. They're all, they're, they're done. There's no chance of those two winning the world championship anymore. Especially in the constructors side, Ferrari on third, if they don't get third, and if they don't really, if they don't, you know, get the points back in, in Monza to get back third, which obviously is going to be a massive feat. I, I don't even know if that's impossible off the top of my head. Um, it, it doesn't look like they would be able to do that. Uh, just looking at that, it, yeah, they, they could do that. But still, it's going to be a massive feat for them. And if they don't get back to third and maintain it and finish it, then they're almost done. But I just, I don't know. I mean, I mean, what, what do you see What do you see wrong with, with, with the team, Jordan? I mean, obviously, I've mentioned the drivers there. You know, we've got Sebastian and Charles. But is that their saving grace? Meaning that, you know, if they weren't in that car those two you know the Ferrari would do even worse or is it one of those things where having those drivers is just making it worse for them and in turn will make it worse for the team because you know go Monza and then go the, the remaining rounds of the season if Sebastian and Charles don't get a car where they can perform they're going to lose love of Formula One and they're going to lose love for the team and they're not going to be performing in the car because they're going to be even more angry what do you see yeah what do you see being the problem and, and how would they rectify that for the future I mean First of all, there's loads of little problems within the team. It's not just the car, it's whatever is happening at, at Maranello. And this isn't a, a thing that's been happening just for this year. It's been happening previously as well. You know, Ferrari, have, I, I think, you know, they've had them, them two winless years in 2014 and in 2016. And in my opinion, a team like Ferrari should not be going through an entire season without a win. It's just, it shouldn't be happening for whatever reason that is. Um, even if they get one or two wins, you know, not not every season is going to be competing. But you would expect maybe on the budget Ferrari, they should be. But sometimes, it, you know, they try a design and it doesn't go their way. Okay, let's spin it off and try again next season. So at least you should expect maybe one or two wins in, in, in that season. But have what I think what was it two winless seasons in the space of what was it four years at the time back in twenty seventeen or tw even twenty eighteen as well. Um, you know in like I said, a team like Ferrari should not be happening. So it's it it's been it's been carried over for a number of years, and you would think it would have been all sorted, but it's not. And Ferrari, for whatever reason, still haven't won a championship despite having some really good cars over the years. Their best chance, you would say, was twenty eighteen. I mean, that car was arguably quicker than the Mercedes. But like I've said before, just because you've got the quicker car 
doesn't always guarantee you success. It's all about it's all about consistency, reliability, teamwork, all that put into play. And if you have that all that package all in one, ready to go, then you're going to be unstoppable. That's what Mercedes have got. A quick car, teamwork, reliability, they've got everything. Ferrari have had a little bit of this and a little bit of that over the years. It's just not going to work having a little bit of this and a little bit of that. You need the full thing. They all need to be singing off the same hymn sheet. And Ferrari aren't at the moment. Some are on page two, some of them are on page five, some of them are on page ten. And some of them don't even have, don't even have a book. Like, come on, sort it out. Um... Now, you mentioned there, Lyle, about the whole the whole power thing. Now, that is a big thing that Ferrari are lacking this season, you know, straight line speed in the power within the engine. Now, last season caused a bit of a stir with the whole engine drama, what's, what's been going on. The FIA investigated it towards the end of last year. Um, they come, they came to what was, what was it, some sort of, like, secret agreement between the team, which annoyed a lot of a lot of the other teams. Like, no, you need to disclose what, what actually you said to this, like, what is the problem? Like, uh, sorry, like, what did you say that that allowed Ferrari to be able to continue with this? Because they never said you weren't allowed to do this. It was just whatever they had, it was okay, that it was discussed behind closed doors and it wasn't really released. I think mainly it was something to do with, like, the amount of fuel flowing into the engine through a, through a sensor, which I think is, like, is it 100 something, some, 100 something per second or whatever it is? Uh, I'm not too clued up with engines, but it's something like that. And Ferrari was able to produce more fuel within the engine without tripping this this sensor, which gave the which gave the engine more power. Then once the FIA looked into it, they rocked up to uh, Austin, and all of a sudden Ferraris were very slow on the straights. Which, hang on a minute, and even Verstappen was quite vocal with this, saying, you know, that's what happens when you cheat, which proper kicked it off even more so since then. And then the FIA uh, released a um, a technical directive to all the teams, uh, adding in a second sensor to the engine, and that is that. And for for that, you can't really cheat because of that, because it has to go through not one but two sensors, which is a lot harder to work your way around. Which now is it's clear to see that was a big problem. Uh, that was one of the reasons why Ferrari did so well last season. I say so well, better than what they're doing this season anyway. But that was why they had so much power, and this season they don't. But then you could argue, well, hang on a minute, then you know. If, if, if it's all down to the engine, then surely the Haas and Alfa Romeos would be slower in Belgium as well. But they were they were faster. Very true. And it's not just the engine, it's the chassis as well. It's producing a lot of drag. That's a big problem. Now, if you look at if you looked at all the sector times between uh, or even like even like lap comparisons, if you want to if you want to put it that way. When I was a uh, Ferrari, sorry, Formula One released a, uh, oh, I think it was Formula One, somebody released like a lap comparison between last year's Mercedes uh, Ferrari and this year's Ferrari. Last year's Ferrari was of course on pole position and it won the race and this year's Ferrari was in P13 and that's where it finished. And in sector one, even though the 2019 car was slightly ahead, it wasn't by much and that surprised me actually. It was a bit, oh, actually, the, they're not, really, they're not like neck and neck, but they're not really... The car isn't as far as what you would think it would be in sector one. So you're thinking, oh, okay. On this, you know, that's quite fast. It's quite not really technical. But then in sector two, that's where the Ferrari car lost a lot of time. That chassis just isn't working. It's producing a lot of drag, not enough downforce. And it just it crippled the car in sector two. And that was the that was the big problem. Then in sector three, you could argue, well, sector one is very similar, very similar to sector three. High speed, not a lot of corners. And, you know, I would say, well, okay, sector one, sector three is very similar, but in sector two, that was the that was a big problem. And we've seen this not just with Ferrari, but with other teams as well, losing times within, within you know, certain sectors. So certainly the chassis is a big problem, but then you can argue, well, okay, then if you help the chassis side of things for, let's say, a, a, a certain sector, in sector one, sector two, or even sector three, okay, well, let's balance it out by improving the downforce that's also gonna inc that's gonna also hamper your chances on the straight so you're either gonna lose straight line speed because you've helped the 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 cornering speed so ferrari are just in the right predicament at the moment they're just they can't get anything right they can't get anything right and now because of the the, the changes for next year aren't going to be very they aren't going to be any different or very little very little difference you know <laughs> They, they aren't going to have any many success next year as well. And the bosses at Ferrari turned around and said, you know, we're writing off next year as well. And you're like, I would hate to be a Ferrari fan right now. But trust me, guys, I'm a McLaren fan. I know what it's like. I lived through the Honda years. They were tough. So this is how it feels. Just, I mean, 
for a team like McLaren, you're like, wow, that that's bad. But for a team like Ferrari, it should not be happening. Now, a lot of people are calling for Bonotto's head at the moment, for him to stand down, for him to lose his job, which I think is a bit of a... It's not just Bonotto. It's a number of things as well. Bonotto has been at for, been at Ferrari since uh, about the time Schumacher joined, I think, or even even longer than that. I'm not too sure. He's been been in since what the mid '90s, I believe. He's been there for a very long time, or even even in even in the late '90s. He's worked his way up, and he's he's got he's had a lot of loyalty with Ferrari. He could have went elsewhere to like you know to like some Mercedes or even Ferrari or even somewhere uh, not Ferrari, Red Bull or even McLaren for that instance. But no, he stayed put at Ferrari, and he's worked his way up to where he is today. And I think what you got to think about, right? Okay, forget about this year and forget about next year. Twenty twenty two, that is that is the big year for Ferrari. It's a brand new technical regulations for everything, a brand new car design. Ferrari have got to get this right. And if not, I fear for the future of the team because seriously, why would you want to be competing? Let's fit. Ferrari are a midfield team this season, which is painstakingly hard to say, but they are a midfield team. If they get third place. That is a that is a b- above expectation season, which for a team like Ferrari happening P three should be considered as a failure of a season. But no, it, it will be classed as a wow. Ferrari had a good season; they got P three. It's like how bad's that? So obviously, twenty twenty two has got to be that that big year where they go. We've got it. So forget about next year. Let's focus on the year after with these brand new regulations. And of course, they've got Carlos Sainz coming in next year. Which I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Carlos, you've chosen the wrong time. Um, but in terms, you spoke there about as well Lyle, about, about the drivers, Charles Leclerc and Sebastian Vettel. They will not be happy whatsoever with, with this car, and they've been quite vocal about this as well. Charles Leclerc expressing his disappointment within the car. Yes, he's not able to get his full potential out of this out of this car. Sebastian Vettel, he's lo- he's lost confidence in himself anyway, and it doesn't help that he's leaving Ferrari next year, which he's been even more vocal because. You know, he can be. I'm not here next year, so it doesn't matter what I say. If it upset them, so what? I'm out the door next year, it doesn't matter. So, you know, and and again, that's obviously, you know, criticised Vettel, and a lot of people are criticising Vettel for his performances and stuff like that, and mm, he's there, that, that, that good driver is still in there somewhere. It's just obviously not coming out uh, this year, unfortunately. But, you know, 2022 has got to be, that. that has to be the year to do it. Whatever Ferrari need to change, they need to change it soon. Have a plan in place. Like I said, right off 21, just just forget about 21. Look at 22 and just hit the ground running. But the question is, though, Lyle, is will they? Now, for a team like... If this was, let's say, Mercedes, and Mercedes were having a bit of a dodgy kind of period where they aren't winning races every single week, they're not really there, and you're going... They're having a bit of a slump. I would expect Mercedes to bounce straight back maybe the following year or even the year, the year after if new regulation comes into play. Because normally with new regulations, they tend to close yeah. the, the, the gap to the teams. And well, yeah, that has worked in the past. But recently with regulations, it's always been Mercedes at the top and that's how it's been. I think we went through two different regulations, just small regulation changes uh, between the, the, the last major one and the next major one. The next major one. Mercedes, Mercedes is still at the top and everyone else is playing catch-up. So therefore, Ferrari, they need to, like I said, write off and just f- focus on 2022. But I've got my doubts. I really have got my doubts, which I shouldn't be having with a team like Ferrari, but I do. I don't know if you do, Lyle, but do you think that Ferrari can realistically bounce back in 2022 and get back to the top of, of top of the tree in terms of pace and winning championships in Formula 1? Well, again, going off what I talked about in F1 24-7 News, obviously I talked about Carlos Sainz and his Ferrari future. And he said that he's pretty optimistic yeah. about what he can achieve, but in 2022, and he's, he's excited about the 2022 season. Um, now, again, what Bernardo said there about writing off 2021, he, he's incredibly pessimistic. Like, what you've said beforehand, I think you did the news about a month ago, Obviously, Charles Leclerc got his podium at Britain, and then afterwards, it almost came out after that. I think it was where Bernardo said, "Well, that's it. We're gonna, you know, scrap 2021. It's going to be a progressive year, and nothing really going to happen." And obviously, if you're Carlos Sainz, who's just yeah. signed at this point, you're not going to be excited about what what you've just heard. Um, now, they, they are they are they are a team who think that basically the world is crumbling around them, and that next year 
is going to be a year where they're not going to achieve podiums and they are going to be a massive midfield team who no one's going to want to support. You know, the kind of ego when you go to a race, you always, I mean, you do find a majority of the people wearing the top three teams, you know, Mercedes gear, Red Bull gear, or Ferrari gear. You don't really see people wearing Haas gear or AlphaTauri gear. You know, it's not really the midfield team. It's kind of like Ferrari don't expect to have a fan base next year. Um, and they're all going for 2022. Um, and of course, 2022 is the year of the engine regulations. And again, that's why Carlos Sainz said that he's excited about 2022 because of the the changes that you can get. And hopefully, like, Ferrari will be able to capitalise on them. Because, of course, they've done that before. 2007, there was a regulation change. Um, capitalised on that with Kimi Raikkonen. And, of course, with Michael Schumacher also at the start of the uh, millennium. But again, to count on, and we talked about this before with, with Mercedes, to count on engine regulation is like is like me saying... Um, I'm I'm counting on having a million dollar mansion in the next five years, but I've got to win the lottery to, for that to happen. That is very much like that because that's me saying I've got no chance of winning the lottery. I'm banking on a, a dream here, but because I've got my eyes set on this, what did I say, a yacht or a mansion, you know, it's it's going to happen. It, to, to say Ferrari are going to come back in the regulation change in 2022 is absolute rubbish. It's as bad as this channel was in 2016 um, because, you know, it just can't happen like that. Ferrari can't say stuff like that. And um, again, with Carlos Sainz looking at 2022 for that reason and also going off what Bernardo has said, because, I mean, you don't have to really be in the, in the know. You know, we know it and everyone knows it. Ferrari and Matteo Bernardo, the CEO and the managing director and the person who everyone looked to. To be honest, the head of Italian motorsports, you know, he's almost El Presidente. Um, and, you know, he's the one that's saying we're going to write off 2021. I mean, how would you be feeling at this point? And Carlos, of course, had to say not next year and kind of go with what his team principal is saying, which is he's not going to achieve anything next year. I mean, also, nothing's been said about by Charles Leclerc about this, uh, you know, about this ridiculous thing that Ferrari is saying. But 2022, again, these regulation changes won't help anything. Um, I mean, they, they could do, but we're not going to bank on that. That is ridiculous. And it's also two years away. Um, but also with Carlos saying that again, I think it's I think Matteo's got on his head a little bit. You know, 2021, nobody knows what's around the corner. Nobody knows how these other teams are going to get on, how Mercedes are going to get on, how Red Bull are going to get on, how Renault or McLaren, of course, McLaren getting the Mercedes engine for next year. So that's another customer team to uh, Mercedes that might hinder Mercedes. It most likely might help McLaren, but we don't know how. And as I just said there, it might not help McLaren. It might be a Honda days in 2015. They might do terrible with that Mercedes engine. We don't know. Um, so again with Carlos, he, he could he might get something in 2021, but he's just going to have to be positive. And so is Charles for next year. Again, I don't think Ferrari saying 2021 is going to, you know, saying that it's going to be a, a bad year. That's not helping. It's not even like the same progressive as well. You know, they have literally said this car, they are not expecting anything in 2021. They haven't said that they're going to work with the car. You know, they're going to work on that SF1001 or whatever it's going to be called, 92. They haven't said that they're going to be working on that. They're just almost picking all their, beg their eggs out of the 2021 basket and just hiling them in the 2022 basket. And then again, you know, are we going to see this problem next year, Jordan? Are we going to see Matteo coming out again? Or whoever the CEO of Ferrari will be, come out and say, we're not expecting anything in 2022. We're expecting it to be good in 2023 and pick up all the eggs again and put them in the 2023 basket. And almost we start kicking the can down the road until we get to like 2090 and, you know, nothing's come about Ferrari. I don't really know. I mean, as I say, they're just an absolute mess at the moment. But... Their thinking is a mess, but in terms of the actual performance of the car, I don't actually think it's it's as bad as everyone is thinking because, you know, Belgium wasn't a good race for them. Spain wasn't a good race, even though we did see Sebastian have a pretty good, you know, last part of the race, obviously pick-up driver of the day. Um, but remember, Charles Leclerc did get on the podium in Britain, and he was quite a consistent driver before that, you know, a strong race in Hungary and the two Austrias also. I mean, of course, Sebastian might not be forming as well, but that might be a driver thing. But we're looking at Charles, who is going to be the leader of the team next year. You know, he's pulling out these results. I mean, they might not be great, but, you know, fourth place in Silverstone, or, uh, you know, a seven-year anniversary, sorry. You might not want to cheer about that, but it's still a, a decent performance. So the car is there. And the question that I put on Twitter the other day, Jordan, um, that, you know, I think we should discuss that last thing before we end the episode, is can Ferrari bounce back in Monza? Their home race. Obviously, there's no to foresee there. And maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that is a good 
thing. Um, like 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 they said, uh, there's no. It, it's a good thing that there was no Barcelona fans to see them get beat a two by Bayern Munich in the Champions League. Maybe it's a good thing to have no fans at Monza to see this. You know, and we might get fans at Mugello, we might get fans at Imola, but now is now, when it's the first Italian, it's a Ferrari race, it's, you know, it's a prestigious one. Of course, it's not Ferrari's 1,000th, but it's still a home race for the Tifosi. And if anything, they could iron out some problems heading into, of course, Mugello, which is obviously going to be their 1,000th Grand Prix and possibly might have Tifosi in. But can they iron out their problems for this race? Well, I mean, on Twitter, a lot of people, if not everyone, I think it was 90% to 10% said, no, they can't. And we're going to expect another Sebastian Mein Gott with design because it's just a terrible car and they're not going to achieve the results back. Uh, because as I've just said, you know, Britain, the two races at Silverson weren't too bad for the Scuderia. So the question to you, Jordan, is can Ferrari bounce back? You know, we, we, we had a week between Spa and Monza. Obviously, mm -hmm. if, if you want to relate it to football, you know, they've got the home field advantage if you want. You know, they know the track. And of course, they won last year as well with Charles Leclerc. Yeah. So, yes, can they bounce back? And can Monza be a redemption for Ferrari? And when I say redemption, I'm not speaking about winning the race or anything like that. But can it be a race where they do get better results and, you know, say what they have accumulated over, you know, the 2020 seasons, for example, fourth place and fifth places? Can they bounce back in the constructors as well? They're sitting on 61 points and third place McLaren are on 68. So it's not too far behind. Can Monza be a bounce back? For Ferrari, um, no, I don't think it will be. I think it won't be as bad as Spa. However, when I, and it will be an improvement, but we're talking a tenth, two tenths at least. Maybe not even that. Maybe even less than that. Like maybe like a hundredth of a, of a second quicker than, than or even like better. Maybe one car in the Q three would be an achievement in itself because even though like like like, like I said before, it's not just the engine. That the down the down with it's it's a chassis and Monza is the Temple of Speed. It requires a lot of your engine power. I think it's like eighty five percent of the of the lap is on full throttle, and that you know like I said the engine on the engine side of things it's like it's not as it's not like the end of the world. It's not like a, you know like a McLaren Honda kind of engine like unreliable engine. It's just a lot a lot down on power because like I said the, this loophole that Ferrari had last year they can't use that this year mm -hmm. and that's hindering them in terms of pace. But they've still got a relatively quick car. It's not the slowest car on the on the field, but it's not you know we, I can't expect a Ferrari podium. I mean to be fair I, I wasn't expecting a, I wasn't expecting a podium in Austria and they got a, they got a podium in Austria and then they got one in in, in Silverstone like you said. So, you know, I'm thinking maybe... Well, to be fair, that, that, that was a bit of luck, but never, nevertheless. Mm, yeah. um, but, that, but that's what you need. You know, you know Charles Leclerc was in, was in, was in the, the right position at the right time. And if he's, all right, I'm slow and I'm in P4, but P4 is still a good position because if something happens up ahead, I'm there to pick up the pieces to get a P3. Charles Leclerc is there and, and Sebastian Vettel's not. But, I mean, going forward in terms of, like, this season, I can't see anything improving for Ferrari. Now... I know that the art, the team is working hard behind the scenes. It's not like they're sitting back at, back on their chairs, we're sitting coffee and going, "Oh, th this is this is fine. We'll just forget about it. You know, we don't care anymore." Like they they won't be doing that. And Vettel has openly said this that you know they're not taking the mick like we are. They are working hard behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. They just they can't put their finger on what the problem is, what it, what it's fundamentally down to. Um, so in that case, if they don't know now, then they're not going to know for next season because, uh, sorry, for this season because then they're going to be looking on next season, and maybe like try to improve little bits for next year's car. Like it's not going to be a race winning car next year neither. But if they can look at this and go right, okay, that's wrong. If we can change it on next year's car, we'll do it because, like I said, you can't change much for next year's car neither. So the the pace is going to be relatively similar. But if they can change things on the chassis, then I'm sure that they'll do it. So it's now going to be a testing session between now and the end of the season rather than just a redemption kind of season. So uh, Ferrari no race wins this season. I'm writing that off. Mm. They might get one or two podiums, one or two lucky podiums if the likes of Mercedes and Verstappen aren't quick or they just have a problem, let's say. And maybe Charles Leclerc and I doubt, I doubt Vettel, but we'll say him anyway. <laughs> Sebastian Vettel over there, like I said, to pick up the pieces. And yes, they are they going to Mugello, which again, I don't know how that the track will the track will affect their car because we've never been there in Formula One terms, especially in the, in the modern cars. It might I don't think it'll help them drastically, but 
I, from what I've seen, it, it it does require some speed, but also it's got a lot of uh, fast corners as well, which is what Spa had, and that didn't suit the car, so I'm not expecting good things from Mugello either. Uh, and the same when we go to Turkey, and oh God, <laughs> when we go to the semi-oval uh, uh, Bahrain track, Jesus <laughs> Christ, uh, I wouldn't bother. I think I even said I even said in the preview, uh, Ferrari fans don't don't even bother tuning in. It's, it's pointless. Um, but no, I, it is it is gonna be it is gonna be bad, not just for for Monza, but for the rest of the season as well. And yeah. yes, you are right, Lyle, that in the, that that like Ferrari don't have to go to Monza to witness this monstrosity, <laughs> which is. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, we went there three years ago, and Ferrari were they weren't on the pace in in the race, and um, the fans you can tell that they weren't too they weren't pleased. I mean, they were cheering whenever Kimi and Seb passed, but you could tell that they were it's just not good enough. Yeah. If fans were at Monza, I mean, it could be a booing fest. It could be, yeah, I agree. You know, yeah. like, yeah, yeah, like, you know, like showing their displeasure towards their, towards their team and rightly so because you know fans have been paying the money to buy the merchandise like Ferrari fans are, they're so passionate about that team it, 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 it's unbelievable mm-hmm. and your team isn't delivering and you're like well I'm going to you know, release my frustration and tell the world what I think mm-hmm. and if everybody gets together and says something then the, then surely Ferrari will listen to it but of course it's a problem that's not it's not going to go away overnight and I mean like I said, 2022 is going to have to be that year that Ferrari click back into shape. You know what we need to do? We need to see when do they ex- we, we need to see more angry um, clips. You know when the when the cars are going past instead of these like you know go Verstappen, go Ricardo, go Hamilton, go Bottas. We should see you know people going like you know come on Leclerc and you know finger gestures and, and everything. <laughs> That's what we need to see. I wonder them. what they would be. <laughs> Did you do you remember the one just you know not about Ferrari but honestly I found this hilarious where the Verstappen fan was going go Verstappen and and he, he was doing the shoey and then it was like a photo of Ricardo and then he's like visible <laughs> confusion like that's my thing that Don't was still... weird that, that was weird yeah no yeah <laughs> that, that 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 was really weird when I seen that Verstappen fan doing the shoey it's like no but I, I see where it's coming from. <laughs> But you know, ultimately, you know, and, and Carlos Sainz, like you know, like you said there before, Lyle, I, I truly believe that he, he. I mean, I don't think he'll. He's, he's not regretting it, but by any stretch, by any stretch of the imagination, because at the end of the day, it's Ferrari. If they were the te- if they were the slowest team on the grid, and someone offered you a contract, you know, you probably shouldn't turn it. But well, maybe, maybe not the slowest team on the grid. But if they are where they are supposed to be, like they are now, you're still not going to turn them down because it's Ferrari. And surely Ferrari can hopefully pick pick things up and, and go forward. And maybe Carlos Sainz is looking at this goal. This is the future thing now. This is he knows twenty twenty one isn't going to be a good year, so he's yeah. accepted that hopefully. So that in twenty twenty two and maybe even twenty twenty three, if he gets another contract, that is, um, it could be a good thing going forward. And we could look at it, look at it and go and well, we all thought it was probably the wrong move. It turned out to be the right move. I think I the worst thing for Ferrari, that, though, I wouldn't have heard that the, before. The worst thing for Ferrari, though, Jordan, or worst thing for Carlos Sainz, even, is the fact that if he was going from Formula Two or, or you know an Alfa Romeo to Ferrari, it would be a big change. It's the fact that I think, and this, I think, this is what worries you know for Carlos Sainz and Carlos Sainz fans. And to be honest, I think a lot of people. This is what I'm thinking. Is I'm, I mean, I know you can't, you know, whatever's done is done. You can't look over your shoulder. But I think with Carlos Sainz, he's worried because even though he's going to Ferrari, what happens? What I want to say when, but what happens if McLaren create a really? Because I think McLaren are going to have a really good season next year. You know, Mercedes engine, the, the, the wrong point basically since the days of Fernando Alonso and GP2 engine and with Honda, they've been building them been building a really, really good team. And, you know, on the surface, yeah, you see Lando and Carlos and stuff. And, you know, the, behind the scenes, it seems like a really ferocious team. It seems young and youthful and evolved, but underneath it seems like a really, f- you know, fear team. With Renault engine, they're doing well. I think next year with that Mercedes engine, they're going to have a really good season. And my worry is... And again, I think that this is what this is why Carlos is so worried. Because I, I said in the news video, he's excited about the, the Ferrari move. But I think the only worry he has is what happens when or if I said when again if McLaren have a really good season in twenty twenty one, and basically we see kind of that you know if Ferrari go back to the midfield, or sorry you know don't improve or even get worse, don't get podiums, and then McLaren 
go up to where Ferrari were in 2019. They get podiums. Well, they chance for race wins. And I think Carl, I think that's what's worrying Carlos because he could be seeing Lando, his teammate, who he's been in Ferrari longer. He's sorry, he's been in Formula One longer, and of course has more points and better results. Actually, no, he doesn't because Lando. Yeah, uh, well, he's tired at the moment. But you know, he's been in Formula One longer. If he sees Lando on the podium. I think he'll be happy for him, but he'll be very jealous and very annoyed that he went to Ferrari to do this transitional year when, as I say, McLaren in 2021 are, are going for a very fierce and, you know, full-on, full-gas career. And I think that's what's worrying Carlos uh, going into Ferrari yeah. next year. Yeah, I think it will be. But I was just about to say that before about we have seen this before where a guy is not doing well at a team. He moves teams and, and his previous team actually has a good season when he's not there. Yeah. Fernando Alonso. We've seen that we've seen that at um Ferrari when he was at Ferrari. He went he, he then went to, he went back to McLaren in 2015. Ferrari had a really competitive car in 2015, a car that I would say if they had Alonso in the wheel at the wheel, I think they could have probably won more races. I mean, mm. I'm, I'm saying that with Vettel and Alonso in, in the same team, that would have been pretty that would have been pretty good to see. Yeah. Um, if if Alonso was there instead of Vettel, um, uh, you know, if 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 he had stayed on, I think he he gained. Maybe I don't know if he would have won more than three races, but still though, I think Ferrari would have been just as good, if not better, with yeah. Alonso than than what they had with Vettel, mm-hmm. to say the least. Um, and then he had he had, he had a torrid time at, at McLaren. It looked better at the start in twenty eighteen when they switched to Renault power, but then it it slowly went backwards. But that, that was mainly down to they forget they just abolished development on the 2018 car and focused on the 2019 car. Alonso got sick of being at the back. He was frustrated. He called it a day. And look what happened with McLaren in 2019. Finished in P4. <laughs> uh, Carlos Sainz on the podium in Brazil. Couple of P4s. Lando Norris had a good season. Carlos Sainz had a good season. I mean, if Alonso was in that car, maybe, just maybe, McLaren could have got maybe one or two lucky podiums. Yeah. A lot more than what they did last season. And... Even if he does go to Ferrari and McLaren have a good season, then you know what? You look at it and go, that could have been me. But he will want to work hard with Ferrari, work with them and go, right, okay, let's make a mug out of McLaren and go, let's build a race winning car for 2022 because that's when everything resets itself. Yeah. You don't know who's going to be where in 2022. You can have an idea, but you, you don't realistically know. Like next year, you, you know who's going to be at the top. Mercedes, of course they're going to be. But do you know... Like, how do you know that they're going to be there in 2022? Mm-hmm. You don't. You know what I mean? So that's what he'll be doing. He'll be looking at looking at that going like, it, it will hurt him seeing that if for, if McLaren do have a really good, a really do, uh, sorry, a really good improved 2021 season with that Mercedes power unit and get one or two podiums on pace alone. Yeah, it, that will annoy him, but that could, re, that could burn that fuel inside of him and just go, right, okay, I don't want to say this, I want to be, Laughing at McLaren, going, ah, "You lost me as a driver, rather than I lost, than, than I lost you," type of thing. But ultimately, that it, it could it could go back to backfire him. But that's the thing, right? You can't just you can't just sit there and go, "Right, okay, I'm just going to sit here for the rest of my career because oh, they've told me this plans and I'm very excited. We've got the Mercedes power unit. I mean, it might not even help them in 2021 because, like I said, they've got to make little changes to the chassis to be able to fit in the Mercedes power unit for next season. And that was that's and they're the only team that could do that. They like other teams can't change a lot of things to their chassis but McLaren they have to to fit in the power unit and that could work in their favour but could also work really badly they could go backwards they might have the power but they might not have the downforce like what yeah. the Ferrari cars got this season because you know what I mean so and but ultimately it could it could increase I really don't know we'll have to wait and see for that but yeah like Carlos Sainz will be on the long term thing surely he'll be looking at looking at that going I've got belief in Ferrari with their facilities, with their financial aspects, I would say, and within within himself, surely that we could build a really good race winning car in 2022. I mean, some, I mean, it could be the Ferrari contract, it could be the money, or it could be the project that they've got in place. Something has lured Carlos Sainz to Ferrari more than just the name Ferrari. Because, I mean, like even though you don't turn them down, you know, McLaren with the Mercedes power unit coming in, they're on the right trajectory going up in Formula 1. It's like, uh, but what do you do? But then again, like that, that's what you do in Formula 1. You take risks. Carl Sainz is taking a risk. It could either work really, really well or it could work really, really badly. And we all, we all thought the same thing when Lewis left McLaren for Mercedes. Now, of course, Mercedes weren't in a position where Ferrari were, but still, though, they were, they were still a midfield team. They weren't really a proven team yet. And we were like, we all, I've, I've seen Mercedes as a, as a midfield team. 
So Ms. Lewis went back to back down the grid realis realistically, but in a way, in 2013, Mercedes just had just replaced McLaren in terms of pace. McLaren fell back. They were they were a midfield team, and Mercedes were faster. Finishing second in the constructors, which is brilliant, ahead of Ferrari, not too bad. Um, and look 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 at where he is now. It worked out for him, and who's laughing now? You know what I mean? Like people have the doubts, and Lewis proved them wrong. Carlos Sainz will, will will want to do the exact same thing, but that's the thing. It's mis it's Ferrari. They're so inconsistent. I really don't know. I honestly do. I honestly do not know. But there's plenty of things you know that that could go that come about of this about with Ferrari and stuff like that with, with the future going forward. It's a big topic. Again, that will, that will, I'd imagine we'll be all talking about leading up to the 1000 Grand Prix at uh, Mugello. But we'll have to wait and see what happens with Ferrari uh, this weekend in, in Italy and then, of course, the following week in Mugello. But, guys, this is where we're going to wrap up the video. Thank you so much for watching, as always. It's been an absolute pleasure. If you're new, if you're new around here, then please drop us a like and uh, hit that subscribe button as well. 3,000 subscribers before, before the end of the season would be absolutely tremendous. And as always, leave your opinions in the comment section below. We'll respond to them. Have a bit of a debate in the, in, in the comments, as we'd like to do. Leave your thoughts about Ferrari going forward this season, color signs, everything we've discussed in this episode, or maybe something that we might have missed. Leave it all in the comment section below. Uh, more content coming for you, of course, this race weekend. Preview came out on Thursday, so go and check it out. Our interview dropped yesterday. Did you like it? Were you, su were, were you surprised? Did you enjoy it? Or if, you, if not... Then, sorry, we, we hyped it up for absolutely nothing. Uh, and then, of course, tomorrow we have got the uh, Italian Grand Prix race reaction with yours truly straight after the Grand Prix. So go and join us there when we uh, when we upload the video uh, for our race reaction. But, guys, thank you so much for watching. Watch, watch, uh, watch what you're doing, as always. Stay safe. And until next time, we'll see you later. See you later, guys.